Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. Happy New Year. Not only is it a new year, it's a new Stampin' Up! catalog. Two of them actually. January and February are what we call celebration in the Stampin' Up! world. And celebration means that you get this little catalog and for every $50 you spend, you can choose something free. There are level one products in here free with a $50 purchase and then level two products are free with a $100 purchase and you can stack them so if you spent $200 you could get four of the level one or two level ones and one level two I know it sounds complicated but it really isn't um this week I am focusing on my favorite product in this catalog and it's the Jungle Pals stamp set and the Jungle Pals dies. Now this is interesting. I don't know if Stampin' Up! has done this before, but if you look in your catalog, the stamp set is free with a $50 purchase and the dies are free with a $100 purchase. So that's what we call a level two. I mean, at least that's what I call it. I don't know, maybe that's not what everybody calls it, but that's what I call it. Um, so to get these for free, you would need to spend $150 to get both of them. Um, now we're going to use a couple of other new things today. Um, I'm going to show you how I colored the tiger, how I made it a little bit easier. And also on my blog, I have several other projects using the Jungle Pals. So make sure if you're looking for ideas to hop over to my blog to grab those ideas. Okay, so let's get started. One thing I want to say is that... Um, it doesn't have any sentiments. So you can really, you know, change this card. Use, I love to go through my sentiments and find things that really go with the stamp sets uniquely. Um, this one, I chose There's No One Like You from the Happy Labels right here. So this one is in the annual catalog. That's the one I chose to use. All right, let's do, let's make our little tiger first. He's the star of our show. Um, I love to color with stamp and blends, but I know not everybody loves to color with stamp and blends and sometimes we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to show you how to color this guy quickly. Um, if you have a stamp positioning tool, you can use it. It's not necessary, but I like to use it when I'm stamping on colored cardstock just to make my uh, image dark and I can stamp it multiple times to get it really dark. All right, so I've got him here on my uh, Stamparatus, and I'm going to ink him in Memento Black. Now, you could use Stazon, and Stazon will be a deeper, richer black on your colored cardstock, but I am going to add some color with my Stampin' Blends. And Stampin' Blends and Stazon don't mix real well, so that's why I'm choosing Memento Black. We're just going to go in and add in some shading onto our little guy with a Stampin' Blend. Okay, so I did it three times, got him pretty dark there. And I'm going to take my dark pumpkin pie. This is pumpkin pie cardstock. If you use your light pumpkin pie stamp and blend, um, at first it'll look like you're going to be able to see it, but then when it dries, it's the same color as the cardstock. So you want to use the dark color. And I'm just going to go in and add in some color. Actually, you know what? I'm going to turn to my brush end because I like to flick the color when I'm doing shading like this. All right, I'm going to add color anywhere where there's an overlap so that that's, we know it's going to be darker there. And then where his stripes are too, I'm kind of adding in some color. I added just a little bit between his stripes just to kind of give us a little bit of interest. This one I kind of did like a diagonal like that. Um, let's do some on the bottom of him. He would be a little bit darker. And then up here around his face. I'm going to do some shading just under his nose. And a little bit there with his stripes. And then, of course, right here where it's overlapping. All right, now these are going to dry. It's real dark at the beginning, but as it dries, it lightens up. You can see on my sample. All right, now let's use the dies. The dies are really fun. Not only do they cut out the stamps in the Jungle Pals stamp set, but you've also got a vine, a tree, and multiple leaves. So I'm gonna use the leaves and the vines today. I've got a, another card using the tree. The tree is really fun, especially with the sloth. You know what, let me make sure this is lined up. You want to look at the ears, the feet, and the tail to make sure 
Everything is lined up right. Let's see how we did. There we go. Tiger looks good. Now, while I have the machine here, let's cut some other things. You're gonna wanna cut out um, I keep thinking this is grass, but I think maybe it's leaves hanging down from the tree, like a jungle canopy, but we're gonna use it as grass today. And two of these leaves, both in garden green. Um, I cut out two vines also in garden green. Now I've got a piece of pebbled path cardstock, and we're gonna create this little frame right here. I was kind of thinking a zoo, you know, looking through the window. Um, I'm using the Radiating Stitches uh, Rectangle, which I just had in my hand. Let's see, it's probably under something. Oh yeah, here it is, <laughs> under my ink pad. All right, now this is the larger Radiating Stitches Rectangle and I'm gonna center it. The measurements for these pieces are on a free PDF over on my blog. Um, you can download that PDF and save it, print it, do whatever you want. I even go back sometimes to find old PDFs to find measurements for cards that I want a copy of my own. So they're always there for you if you want to use them. Okay, so we've made our little window. Save that for something else. And now we can start putting our card together. The first thing that we're going to do is put some vellum on our cardstock like this. Okay, so I'm gonna use liquid glue and you just really just want a tiny bit. I'm not even squeezing it, I'm just using what's coming out and just kind of spreading it because you don't want it to squish out and then you'll be able to see it. All right, let's lay that down. I made it just like a hair smaller than my frame. It could be the same size. I'm just never perfect with my cutting, so if I make it a little bit smaller, we know it'll be right. Um, okay, now we've got a strip of crumb cake, and we're gonna stamp that fun sentiment. There's no one like you, right in the middle. All right, now for our card base, I've got basic black. I love to make colored card bases. I know some people only use white, but I love a colored card base. I think I use color way more than I use white card bases. This is new paper from the spring catalog. Um, rock and roll, is that what it's called? It'll be on my supply sheet, don't worry. Um, but I liked those stripes. They reminded me of the tiger stripes. So we'll put that one right here in the middle. Now, because you have a basic black card base, you're gonna need to put some white on the inside so that you can write your message. And this is what I um, cut the vines for so we can make the inside cute. So I'm just gonna, again, teeny, 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 tiny dots. And I'm just gonna adhere them going across. Another thing you can do if you don't like liquid glue is cut the, put um, a, adhesive sheets on the back of your cardstock and then cut the vines out. And then you peel off that backing and they're stickers. It makes them stickers, which is perfect. You just lay it down. Okay, so now I think we've given this enough time to dry. I'm gonna use foam adhesive strips. This, these, uh, I think these are designed to make shaker cards but, and this would be a great shaker, but I didn't, I didn't make it a shaker. We're just gonna use this for height. And it's easier than trying to get those dimensionals to fit perfectly in our little skinny frame sides. All right, one more, and then we're almost done. It's a pretty easy card. Now, if you prefer to color, you can always just stamp your tiger on basic white. All right, there we go. Now let's start with this guy. I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue here on the sides. And we're gonna take our crumb cake strip. Let's see, why is my card wanting to pop up? There we go. 
All right, make sure it's straight. And I wanted to leave a little bit of room there so you could see below it. And then I'm gonna take some more glue and I'm gonna put this down here at the bottom. Now put the glue low on your grasses so that you can have your tiger coming out from behind the grass, okay? So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna put dimensionals on him and then I'm gonna have him kind of, well, I really needed to give that some time to dry. Let's see, we'll have him coming out from this grass. See like that, like he's behind. Let's see, we need him a little bit taller. Let's do this one. He can be in front of some and behind the others. There we go. All right, and then we'll get our leaves and we're gonna tuck them back here behind, oh, behind him, maybe. There we go. And one more like that. All right, last but not least, we're gonna add a jute twine bow. This is Pebbled Path. Pebbled Path is one of our in colors. And so we have coordinating products. We have coordinating products with most, most of our colors, but the in colors especially. And so this is exactly that color, matchy matchy, which we all like. And you're gonna grab a glue dot. I'm sorry guys, I don't know where my open glue dots are. Good thing I had an extra one here. And we're just gonna stick that right there. I want one up and one down like that. And there you go, a fun card. You can change this to be a birthday card. It could be a thank you card. It could be any kind of card. Just change that sentiment. All right, make sure you click the link here on YouTube to go back to my blog and grab that free PDF and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.